Hi, it's Maya here with my November reads and receipts and in this video I go through what I read during the month, did I lower my TBR count and how I did with my challenges. And at the start of the month my TBR count was 74 books. Now let's start with the reads. The first book that I read in November was A Small Chart Face by Kasuke Sakuraba and this I read from the library and I body read this very sympathetic vampire book. You might know that I'm very into vampires and I like this take on them. So this is a Japanese vampire book about Chinese vampires called the bamboo who have traveled over to Japan. They have the regular vampire characteristics of having to drink blood and burning in the sun but they only live about a hundred years or so and after that they bloom and turn into flowers and are gone. This book consists of three short stories with some characters in common. The first one has this human boy who is sort of adopted by some bamboo and then the second one follows a bamboo, bamboo character that featured in the first story and then the third story is about the history of the bamboo in China. The first story, which I think was the longest one, was my favorite. It tells about this human boy called Kyo whose family is murdered and he he ends up adopted by these two gentle bamboo uh, from the poor side of town. But it is forbidden for the bamboo to communicate with humans and tell their secrets, so they have to really keep it a secret that Kyo is living with them. It's a weirdly sympathetic and warm-hearted story, even though it looks at the uh, difficult life that the people on this poor side of town have, so it has some dark elements in it as well. The story actually followed Kyo throughout his life, but my favorite parts where when he was young, the vampires were just so excited about these little human things they had sort of didn't know about or had forgotten, like that Kyo was getting taller, that they were so like lovingly excited about it. I just found that story so heartwarming. The other two stories were good, they were interesting, and I liked the writing style, but the first story was the reason that this got four stars from me. Then the first book that you chose for me to read in my November random TBR videos was Night's Master by Tanith Lee, and this is a dark fantasy book that I own, and it was so good. I was so happy that you chose for me to read this, because I might have just kept putting it off. This is the first book in a fantasy series called Tales from the Flat Earth, and it really does re read like tales, like fairy tales, with the demons of this world. And one of the big characters is this demon lord called Asran, who is the prince of demons, and yes, I really enjoyed him. At one point uh, someone mildly inconvenienced him by talking to him uh, on the side of the road, and he just struck her with lightning. So like, don't bother demons. But then he also has this weird sense of justice, but then he also develops and holds a grudge very easily, and I just love these uh, non-human characters with weird morals. The writing style of this reads so much like a fairy tale. The book is made of these shorter stories that are linked, but often also have beginnings and endings in them, like they're short stories, but together they form this bigger legend or this bigger story, and it's divided into three books. The first book was called Book One, Light Underground, and that one was my favorite. It starts with Asran taking this beautiful human baby boy into Underearth, which is this demon realm, and the boy is raised by his servants. He later becomes Asran's lover, and it is their whole story. By the way, this eagle on the cover is Asran in eagle form, and this woman is this flower woman that features later on in the book, but in my opinion, opinion, this one should have been the beautiful human boy who Azran took from the human world. Book two was called Tricksters, and that one had aged a bit badly. I still liked it, the opening story especially was great, and I liked that it featured this cold woman conqueror, but her backstory is that she was raped. It's on page rape, by the way, so content warning for that. And she was um, treated badly because she is disfigured. I don't know the proper term for that, but when she was a baby, she was torn up, her face was, to was torn up by brambles. And because of these two things, she now wants revenge. This is a very tired backstory these days. This book was written in the 70s. Then there's book three, The World's Lure. That one is very interesting to follow, and I like the end parts of it, but the stories that are in it weren't as interesting as the stories in the previous two books. I really love the fairy tale type book that it, this is, and I gave this one 4.5 stars, and reading this big brings my TBR count down to 73 books. While I was reading that, I was also reading a library book, and that one was Blanca Iroha by Anne-Marie McLemore. I haven't read anything from them before, and it's sort of a magical realism young adult fairy tale, and it mixes aspects of the Snow White and Rose Red fairy tale with Swan Princess. And I was actually going to return this to the library, and then I started reading the first page, and the voice just captured me, and I liked the story of these two sisters who are looking up for each other, at least at the beginning. 
I did like the first part more than the rest of the book. In the middle especially, the sisterly aspect is put on hold. Of course, there are other characters who get mixed in with the stories. And I just wasn't that interested in especially this character called Yearling's family situation. I would much rather have it focus on the sisters. And I gave this one three stars. The next book that you chose for me to read was actually a tie with a book called The Perilous God. I read Creatures of Will and Temper by Molly Tanzer. And this one is a historical fantasy based on the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And it isn't really a retelling because it changes a lot, but it is in conversation with the original book. So in this one, two sisters come to spend time in London. Uh, Dorina Gray, who wants to be an art critic, and Evadne Gray, who is the chaperone Dorina, who uh, loves to fence. And they're staying with their uncle, cousin, I can't remember, but they're related to Basil, who is the character from the original book, and they meet Basil's friend Lady Henrietta Wotton, uh, who is of course a take on Lord Henry. And the added fantasy element in this book is that demons can live inside humans. I couldn't get invested into this book. I do appreciate how it is in conversation with the original. Um, in the author's note, Molly Tanzer says, But what if Dorian had no victims? What if his quest for aesthetic experiences were not portrayed as a journey into a moral and spiritual underworld? A fantastic variation on the picture of Dorian Gray, or at least one envi envisioned through a glass, not darkly, but brightly. And I also liked how it incorporated characters of different sexualities. Dorina is lesbian and is very taken with Lady Henry. I also liked Evadne's passion for fencing and the fact that her fencing lessons were described in the book, but in the end, neither the plot nor the characters fascinated me and I just wasn't interested in what was going to happen next. I don't know if that was the writing style or what it was, but I ended up giving this 2.5 stars and reading this both brought my TBR down to 72 books. Then Delicious in Dungeon Volume 7 by Ryoko Kui came out and I bought it on Comixology and read it. I'm not going to say much about this because it is the seventh volume in this comedy fantasy adventure cooking manga series. I love the characters, it's very funny, I like the art, Kui is very good at uh, character expressions and comedic timing especially, but this one wasn't one of the best volumes in the series, especially because I really loved uh, volume 6, that one was my favorite in the series so far, so in comparison this paled a bit and I gave this one 3.5 stars. All the other ones have gotten 4 or 4.5 stars. So it was still funny, but not as good as the other volumes. Then for another library book, I read a historical fiction horror book called The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. In this book, we follow Elsie, who is widowed just after her marriage, and she's also pregnant. And at the beginning, she's on her way to her late husband's family manor to stay there. The silent companions of the title are these things that Elsie finds from on the attic. They are these like human-sized, uh, human-shaped, wooden cutouts and they seem to be multiplying and also did that one just move its eyes? So this uh, silent companion thing was why I've been wanting to read this book and I was really looking forward to it and I did like that beginning and I also liked Elsie's backstory, it was interesting, but I grew very disinterested in the second half. In that second half I was really waiting for it to twist and uh, change where I thought it was going but it didn't and it ended up having some very ableist tropes. I gave it two stars. On the third week you voted for me to read The Winged Histories by Sofia Samatar, but on the third week I didn't feel like reading at all. I only got 50 pages through this in November, so sorry about that. So the third week I read a couple of comics instead of reading novels and one of those comics I read was Cosmonas by Hannah Templer, which is a science fiction comic that I bought digitally. This one was a lot of fun and I liked the artwork and I liked the colors. So this is science fiction and it's set in this neo-medieval world where the big part of the world are these arena fights where these space tech gladiator knights uh, fight for the hand of, of a princess for their sponsor. So there are many different princesses and a lot of these arena fights uh, across the world. And in this one we follow Pan, who at the start of the comic is helping her friend Tara escape because Tara is a princess and she wants to escape her upcoming future as a gladiator prize. And years later, Pan meets this pair of space gladiator wives who are fighting against the system and the adventure starts from there. So this is just the first volume and I feel like things are just getting started. I'm really looking forward to the next volume. There was this one character called Kate, who is this one uh, character archetype that I really enjoy and I want to see more of them. I recommend this if you're looking for an LGBTQ plus comic about fighting the system and it's also available for free as a webcomic, I will link it in the description. I gave this one 3.5 stars. Then on the final week of my random TBR, 
Uh, the Perilous Card by Elizabeth Mary Pope made a comeback and this is a young adult historical fantasy from the 70s and it's about a young girl called Kate Sutton who is exiled into this remote castle called Perilous Card. This castle has a link to the fairy folk who live in this cave near the castle and Kate become, becomes involved in these mysterious events. This one was quite fun, it really felt like a young adult book with this headstrong heroine and a tragic love interest boy. And my absolute favorite part of this was the parts that were spent in the caves of the fairy realm. I'm really interested in seeing how like the fae society works, it was very fascinating. I wasn't that into how Kate's beautiful sister was portrayed as ditzy and airheaded, where Kate was this plain and intelligent girl. I don't like that trope. Just a random thing. I don't know if my copy has a misprinting for or what, but it was printed like very close to the binding. So I really had to hold it open to read it. There's like no gutter margin. I don't know if it's a misprinting or there's a big margin here, but none here. I ended up giving this three stars. It was a fun read and I enjoyed the Fae. And reading this brought my TBR down to 71 books. Then I finished an owned ebook, and that one was Robin Hobbs Dragonhaven, which is the second book in the Rainwald Chronicles. And I started reading this during Tom Topple. It finally kicked me into starting it because I had been putting it off. And this continues the story of the dragons, their keepers, and various other support crew while they are traveling along the Rainwald River looking for this mystical ancient city. And this one is my least favorite Robin Hobb book so far. I always do enjoy Robin Hobb's characters and her writing, but this one was mostly traveling and a lot of the stuff started in the first book was wrapped up so weren't that many exciting new revelations or scenes. There was also this one plot thing that really annoyed me. It was the plot revolving around the Keepers. The Keepers are these teenagers. There were basically power struggles around gender dynamics. The girls were pressured to choose one boy to partner with or the boy who wanted to be a leader would choose one for them and it was about one of our main characters who was a keeper pushing back against this plan but it was just so aggravating to read about that i didn't like reading those parts i gave this one three stars the other two comics that i read this month while i was supposed to be reading the wing at histories i'm just gonna mention quickly because i didn't really enjoy them and the first of those was the umbrella academy volume 3 hotel oblivion by gerard way and gabriel Barr. and this one is a superhero comic i read it from the library and it was all over the place it was messy a lot of the characters were separated and we were skipping between them just a few pages at a time and there were some big ideas but they were all rushed and muddled it was very hectic i still like the seance i gave it 1.5 stars and the second one was also from the library that was the manga niwawa yamina yuksi so niwawa to saito volume one by nagabe and this one hasn't been translated into english but it's the first volume in this series that is from the creator of the girl from the other side this is about a japanese man called saito who is chosen to host the ambassador of the afrika Afika is this intelligent species living underground, but the Afika who is assigned to Saito is actually a kid. It's mostly focused on the everyday happenings in Saito's apartment, with Nibaba causing chaos because Saito doesn't want to teach it anything and Saito doesn't want to leave the house. So he isn't really teaching Nibaba anything and Nibaba is just making a mess because he doesn't know anything and it was just very tiring. I guess they're gonna eventually bond, but I'm interested in reading the rest of the series. I think it's three volumes or something, not on the level of Nagabe's other series that I mentioned. I gave this one 1.5 stars too. All right, and now we're moving on to the receipts. Did I get any letters for my A to Z TBR project? I got two. I got N from Knight's Master and P from The Perilous Guard. I did not make any progress in my TBR char challenges. I've really been neglecting to those during the latter half of the year. Next, I have a bit of a haul part. Like I said, I bought and read The Lisas in Dungeon Volume 7. I also bought the ebooks of The Bone Witch and The Heart Forger by Rin Chupeka. They were on sale. This is uh, books one and two in the Bone Witch trilogy. That one is a young adult fantasy with necromancy. And then I also got Serial Boxes Ninth Step Station Season 1. This is by Malka Older, Fran Wilde, Jacqueline Koyanagi and Curtis C. Chen. And this one was a Cyber Monday sale, so you could get one season for 50% off or something. And I chose this one, which is a cyberpunk story set in Tokyo. Then I also picked up Sad Cypress by Akata Christie, which is another Poro book. And as you may remember, I am cheating and not counting these. I'm picking up the ones that my library doesn't have. And finally, I visited a used bookstore and I really did not want to up my TBR count. I just wanted to give them books. 
but they are a small place and I, they didn't want to give me money for them, just to store credit. So I'm a bit bummed because I did not want to raise my TBR. But these are the books that I got. And if you want to know more about these, I will link my used and old book haul video in the corner there. The first book that I picked up was a Dragonlance novel, that's Kindred Spirits by Mark Anthony and Ellen Porath. And this one doesn't bring my TBR account up. I sort of picked this up uh, for nostalgia reasons. I want to collect the meeting sextet, but this one, no TBR upping. But then the next one is Beloved by Toni Morrison, which brought my TBR up to 72 books. Ammonite by Nicola Griffith brought my TBR to 73 books. And Doomsday Book by Connie Willis brought my TBR up to 74 books. Now we're moving on to Can I Buy and Can I Buy a Physical Book? Yes, I can, but I'm saving that credit because I want to bring my TBR count down a bit before I pick up some new physical books. Can I buy an ebook? Yes, I can. And I already actually bought one from a sale and that is The 10,000 10, Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. And can I borrow a book from the library? Technically, yes, but I have a bunch of library books. They are here, this whole pile, except the bottom one are library books. And the last two that I have picked up the most recently are The Thorn and the Blossom by Theodora Goss and Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson. So I'm counting these. And then I have two final things, the stats, and for the first time in these videos, an unhaul. So let's start with the stats. In November, I read 11 books. That was... 3,207 pages. I read on average 107 pages a day and took eight days for a book. So finally, the unhaul part. I read three of the four books that you chose for me to read, but then I got the three books that brought my TBR count back up to 74. So now we're where we started, but I just went through my TBR shelf. I haven't really called anything from there. When I've gotten rid of books, like during the renovation move, I have gotten rid of books uh, that I have read. This is the first time that I sort of went through my TBR. And the first of those is Little Brother by Cory Doctorow. And this is a young adult dystopian. I had it this for years and years, and I've just lost interest. My TBR is now 73 books. Then there's The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Rees Brennan and Maureen Johnson. I got this, I think, a few years ago from a friend of mine who was getting rid of it. I thought that even though I have read the first three Mortal Instruments books, I wasn't really interested in the rest of the world, but uh, Magnus, Magnus Bane was my favorite character from those books, and I wanted to read more about him, but I've actually lost interest in this world, so it's gonna go. My TBR is now 72 books. Then there's Kudottujen Kujen Kaupunki by Emmy Itaranda. This is the Weaver or the City of Woven Streets in English. And I got this when I was working at the library and they were getting rid of their excess copies. But I haven't really felt a huge drive to read it in the near future. And my library system has like a hundred copies of this, so I can read it from there. Getting rid of this brings my TBR to 71 books. And finally, another book that I picked up when I was working at the library and they were getting rid of it is Riste by Matt Strandberg. And this is translated from Swedish and the English title is Blood Cruise. Again, it's one of those that I don't think I'm going to read anytime soon and that I can easily get from the library if I want to read it. And now my TBR is 70 books. So that was my November reads and receipts. And my current physical TBR number is 70 books. I'm so excited that in 2019, I'm going to get it to under 70 in December, I still have a chance, even though when I'm filming this a bit late, like after mid-December, I haven't finished even one book that I own, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it to under 70. Let me know if you have read any of these books and I will see you in my next video.